Welcome to another episode of Performance Upgrades. I'm your host, Dave Moss. The show is brought to you by sportbikewrench.com, performance parts and professional advice. Here we are in location for the AMA Kawasaki Superbike Showdown. We're over at the Kawasaki display, and what we have is a ZX14 2006 model. What we're gonna do on this bike is a basic setup for the owner. Let's welcome Brian Good, events coordinator for Kawasaki. Come here every year. And this is your personal bike? This is my personal bike. It's my 2006 uh, ZX14. Okay, how many miles? Uh, I just turned 20,000 miles on it. Okay. How many, at how many miles roughly were the forks serviced? I'd say probably about 5,000 miles ago. Probably okay, 15, so somewhere 000. around 15. Yeah. And the shock has ever been serviced? The shock has never been serviced. Okay. So at this point, we have relatively fresh oil in the front mm -hmm. and seasoned oil in the back. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, another important factor for when we do the setup on the bike, your current physical weight? Uh, 275. 275, okay. So what we're gonna do is take your bike as it sits, that's just stock suspension, correct? Never been revalved, mm -hmm. restrung, and then set it to your weight. Mm -hmm. And in our previous conversation, you've never had a bike set up for you, and certainly not this particular no, one. absolutely not. All right, so what we're gonna do then, go ahead, jump on. First off, we're gonna measure the front forks and see where we're at. So normal seating position, just get yourself nice and comfortable. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're on this distance, we're normally looking for three and a half inches. And we're at two and three quarter inches, so we need to put quite a bit of preload in. Please stay right there. We'll compress the back of the bike. And let's measure here. up to the screw on the tail light, which gives us exactly 19 inches. Okay, go ahead, dismount for me, Brian. So we're at almost an inch and a half in the back where the suspension sits right now. So the bottom line on this bike, as soon as Brian touches the brake, the forks are gonna dive. There's not very much travel there, so we have a lot of work to do with the preload in the front and a little bit of work to do with the preload in the rear on the shock to start. So let's get going. So what I gotta do now is, I'm gonna add all your preload mm -hmm. to the front forks. And what that does is tension the spring mm -hmm. and it'll make the front of the bike ride higher. But what it'll also do is give you a lot more support when you get on the brake so that as you get initially into maybe halfway pull on the brake lever. Mm -hmm. Instead of it diving right away for you, it will actually provide you with a linear drop mm -hmm. because the spring off is your more support. So when all of this is in, we're gonna have you go back on the bike and remeasure it. Alrighty. And see how close we are to a desired sag. Now obviously this is for the street, this is not for track at all. Okay. And all we want to do is make sure that when you brake, mm -hmm. you don't bottom out immediately. And so this is a safety issue. Okay. Go ahead, jump back on. Exactly the same, get comfortable. Now our diff was two and three quarter inches and adding all the preload put us to three and a quarter. So we're still not ideal, we're still not where we need to be. So if you just sit back and relax for a second, on your compression damping, let's see where you're at. Ten clicks out, so I'm going to set that to six. And what the obviously hydraulics will provide you with spring support and mm -hmm. then hydraulic support. So as you get into the lever, mm -hmm. the hydraulics will then take over a little bit and really provide you with a different feel on the front brakes. Now the beauty is, with the compression, you can tune that to suit for how you physically brake. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is you need stiffer springs for your weight. Okay. So, go ahead, grab the bars again. Let's see if that changing your compression damping gave us anything. It shouldn't. It should basically help you hydraulically. That gave us a little bit. It's almost at three and a half inches. Okay, so now the front end is set on weight 
and damping. So jump off. Okay. And then if you stand on the front side of the bike. Okay. Now when I push on the front end, it's supposed to go down, obviously, as you would brake. Right. Return to the top of the stroke mm -hmm. and stop. Okay. Otherwise, when you go down the road, it just gently pogos. And obviously, if you've got a bumpy road, the front end will never settle down. And even with all the preload in, that will not return properly. Mm -hmm. So you, the front of your bike, even when it was fully soft, mm -hmm. was not absorbing the bumps, mm -hmm. it was amplifying the bumps. I see. So what we need to do is open your rebound damping up to allow the fork to move fluidly so that it will absorb a bump and push the wheel straight back down okay. instead of hitting a bump mm -hmm. and reacting to the bump. See the difference in the speed that it returns? Yeah. But it comes to the top of the stroke. Mm -hmm. Now what's great about that is, in terms of all the preload being in, we have taken all the rebound damping out and we're not getting a lot of return down to the front end, but the forks are cold. That may need to be changed when Brian gets back. Okay. So that's the front done. Now let's get back to work on the Rio. We only need a slight change in preload, and then we'll go through the hydraulics. But to get to the preload adjuster, we have to take the componentry off the rear set. All right.